Welcome to labmins.com. In this video, we will look at how to configure NetFlow on Cisco Nexus 1000V. As you will see, the concept remains pretty much the same as compared to the NetFlow on the Catalyst switches, but with the slight differences in configuration syntax. One of the things to keep in mind is NetFlow on Nexus 1KV only support version 9, so you need to make sure that your NetFlow collector or software supports that. In this lab, we have a NetFlow collector running at the IP.40 on VLAN 32. We're going to be using FTP as well as RDP for our test application and see what kind of information NetFlow will gather for us. Now, as far as the configuration syntax, first we need to create a flow record which defines or specify how a flow is defined as well as to specify what kind of statistic or information to be collected from a flow. Then you have to create a flow exporter which define how a flow is exported or sent to the destination. This includes things like protocol and the IP of the flow collector. Then when you tie the two together, it makes up a flow monitor. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is to get onto the command line and the show feature. You can see the NetFlow by default is disabled. So we need to enable it. So with the command feature, NetFlow. The first thing we need to configure is the flow record. So if you go flow, and you can see here there's three options, export and monitor and record. So the first thing is to define a record. And let's give it something like LM record. I just want to show you what kind of configuration that we can do. So basically you have to specify a match, basically how you want to define a flow. So you can do that by, for example, IP protocol or by TOS, uh, IP TOS or things like uh, IPv4, a source and destination. And if you transport, that's basically just the protocol uh, ports, destination source and destination uh, source port. And that's once you specify the flow, you can tell what kind of information you want the NetFlow to collect for you. So things like counter, and whether it's uh, byte counts or packet counts, you can do timestamp, and you can do transport TCP flag as well. So that's when you know exactly what, how you want to define your flow and what kind of stats you're looking for. The other way is you can just utilize the default flow record that comes with the Nexus 1KV. And just to see what kind of information it will be collecting, you can do show flow and then record. You can see right here, there's two options with the NetFlow and NetFlow original. These are the predefined flow record. So let's take a quick look at the flow original and then enter. You can see it collects pretty much all the information that's available as well as use all the attributes to specify the flow. Okay, so in this video, we're just gonna go ahead and use the original flow record, the default flow record. So now that you have flow record, the next thing you need to configure is the exporter which is the definition of your NetFlow destination. So here we call it LM exporter. Maybe question mark, there's a few things that we need to configure. So let's go from top to bottom. You can put description and set things like NetFlow collector. For destination, so it's gonna be 172.16.32.40. Okay, you can even specify it to use VRF if you want. Okay, and then next one is DSCP. If you want to DSCP tag a packet to certain DSCP value. So that's for our demonstration purposes, just use 46. This may or may not be something that you want to do for your, your network since 46 is always get the, by default, the highest priority. Now for the source interface, all we have is management zero, so we'll use management zero. Let's see what else we can do. Transport and UDP. Now you need to know what UDP port your NetFlow collector will be listening at. at. For us, it's 9996, so 9996. And then version. The question mark, you can see that version nine is the only available option, so we'll go with version nine. And under version nine, there's a few things that you can Configure one is option, exporter stat, and you can do timeout, and let's do things like 30 second, and let's see what else. You can do template because version 9 is concept is based on templates. 
So template data, timeout, let's do 30 second as well. Okay, so let's get out of this and then question mark. And that's pretty much how you can configure it. The next part is move on to where you tie the two together, flow record and exporter, and create a flow monitor. So create a flow monitor. We're going to call it LM NetFlow. And this is where you would specify if you want a description and you said exporter is LM exporter. And for the record, question mark, if you create a custom record, then this is where you will put your name of the record. But for us, we're using the default NetFlow original. Enter. And let's see, you can also specify a timeout if you like. So timeout inactive you can say the lowest which is 15. now that we have a flow monitor let's see if you can do some show commands you can do show exporter so it tells you all the information regarding the exporter destination uh, v vrf that we're using transport source interface and some of the stats okay we do show flow monitor Okay, so it shows you the records the exporter is using as well as the timeout and the cache size. Now that we have the flow monitor configured, we are now going to enable NetFlow on these two interfaces right here that belongs to these two servers. So we now need to look for, let's see, for the name 2008, you can do show virtual and look for 2008. You can see they are on VE10 and 11. So do interface VE10 to 11, and then do IP flow monitor LM NetFlow, which is the name of our monitor. Maybe do question mark. You can do input, and we also want to do output as well. Okay, so NetFlow should be turned on right now. Before we go to our NetFlow collector web interface to look at some of the information we are uh, collected so far we want to do a quick monitor session so we can also do a packet capture and see what kind of packets is going towards the collector or it's being sent as part of the NetFlow. Monitor session one we're going to be looking at the interface right here that belongs to the NetFlow collector which is our Win2008 DC1 on VE10. So source interface is VE10 and destination and make sure I can see that it will be win 7 corp and that is on 16 so destination interface v16 okay and then no shut now let's go to our packet capture machine right here let's uh, open up our shark okay then select the interface you want to run the capture on start you can see some of these these are the some HTTP packets which is let that run and let's look at the just filter it by the source, uh, look for a certain specific address, which is the VSM management zero address, which, which is where the NetFlow packet is going to be originated from right here. So once we filter by the IP address, we can start seeing some flow records coming in. So while we have that running, let's generate some traffic. So right now we do have some RDP here and let's go ahead and connect to FTP server. And let's download like a large files. Okay, so let's do that. That's picking up a 300 meg. So let that run. Keep it a few minutes here. And at the same time, we have a software that we're using for demonstration called NetFlow Collector by Manage Engine. And here, if you go to devices, you can see right here we have an LM N1KV, which is our device, and I started to see all the NetFlow packet that's coming in right here. I can see the packet count as well as some of the interface stats. And if you click onto the device itself, you can see how the traffic kind of ramps up a little bit. If you scroll further down, you can see a list of interfaces, which is V Ethernet 10 for our FTP server. And here's some of the data. The NetFlow has got application data NetFlow has collected as far as protocols. You can see there's some HTTPS, there's some SSH, HTTP, 
and that's kind of stop because the flow won't be generated until this thing is uh, kind of done. So we can go and delete those just to make it stop. And we'll, we'll take a look at the packet capture in a second here. Once we're done looking at this interface, let's make sure it, it uh, refresh in a second and just to get the, uh, the information. You can see there's TCP protocol, UDP protocol, as well as ICMP. While this thing is catching up, let's go and take a look at uh, packet capture. So let's just let's go ahead and select one of these to look at. It's a uh, CIP protocol source from the VSM management zero interface, which is 112.16 going towards the uh, uh, NetFlow collector 32.40. As we specify in the, under the exporter, we want to have a DSCP tag by EF. So right here, tag is EF and if you move up the header to the next header, which is UDP, you can see the port, destination port is 9996, just like we specify. And the payload has been identified as Cisco NetFlow or IP fix. And it's got timestamp, it's got number of the, the flow in there. And if you expand the flow set, just trying to see what kind of information comes along. Let's pick another one. There you go. So flow set one, it's got two flows, you can see this is the source and destination. 32.5, this is our vCenter, vClient traffic, looks like. The 32.5 is our vCenter, since we have a vCenter client running. I can see some of the flow information that the NetFlow has collected for you. Okay, start time, end time, and all that. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at this, if this thing is catching up. All right, there you go. So after we kind of terminate our FTP, it's, although there's a lot of data has been transmitted already. So you can see right here, although the protocol shrub as unknown, and that's because the FTP data port is almost random. And that's why the tool kind of really correlates the, whether it's a FT, it's FTP data as part of the FTP session. So right here, FTP, which is what we did, and these are pretty much the control channel. Further down, you can see top source, which is 32.40 because we try to download the file from 42, pulling the file from 40. Okay, and the destination right here is 32.42. And at the same time, you can also see the top conversation as well, which is the same two pair of IPs. Okay, and top DSCP, since we didn't mark the FTP packet, it's shown as default. So we have successfully configured NetFlow on Nexus 1000 V and which that's pretty much wraps up our video. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.